Hello and welcome to the fourth lecture of Advanced Calculus course. Uh, in today's lecture, we will continue our, our discussion of convergence. In the last lecture, we have learned the definition of convergence and few of its properties. The most important one was that if if a sequence converges to a number, then the number is unique. So that means that we could use this notation of limit. When we say this, since uh, when you write like this, since this, uh, uh, the sequence will converge to unique value, we can assign a single value to this notation. So this notation is well defined. Uh, today we will <clears throat> deal with some more properties of convergence, including some of the more important ones and some of the examples that will help you understand the concept of convergence more clearly. Uh, first, we will deal with the important concept of subsequence. So, if a sequence AN converges to A, then its subsequence AN sub K will also converge to A. Uh, what do we mean by subsequence? Uh, what is this notation? A subsequence, is, like a subset to a set, is a sequence that is created by selecting few of the terms in a, in a sequence. So, for example, let's say that a n is given like this: a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, and so on. Then we will select few of the uh, we will select few of the sequence uh, few of the terms in the sequence to form a subsequence, and of course this is a sequence too. We will select infinitely many numbers. So for example, so a two, a five. Let us have more terms. A a seven, a ten. Right now, I don't have like a distinct pattern to classify the numbers we are selecting, but for for example, this will be our first term in our subsequence, like this. So, what we're doing exactly is forming another sequence within a sequence. So our new sequence will be like a two, a five, a seven a 10 and so on. So this is our original sequence and this is our subsequence. So when the original sequence converges to a number A, then its sub subsequence will also converge to number A. Why? It follows from the definition of convergence. So Let's see. Since uh, a n converges to number a, what that really means is that there exists a natural number n such that for all n greater than the number, the difference between the nth term of that of the sequence and the number that it is converging to that will be smaller than epsilon, where epsilon is an arbitrary positive number. So we have this. This is a given condition in this problem. And if we see the subsequence of uh, of this sequence. What happens? Uh, to solve this, we should first know that the kth, uh, what should we call this, a subnumber in the in the subsequence is greater than or equal to k. Why is that? It follows from the uh, mathematical induction. Uh, so, first, and the first Sub uh, sub number in this subsequence 
it's a natural number so it will be greater than one correct so and uh, let's say that to k until k the one we would like to prove the statement it holds and if we see the next term this is certainly greater than these uh, sub number before it and since this is greater than or equal to k by uh, inductive inductive hypothesis um, inductive assumption this will be greater than or equal to k plus 1 this is a simple logic and since these two conditions hold by the mathematical induction we know that this statement is true so what happens is that for any positive number epsilon since by the condition there exists a natural number uh, large n such that for <clears throat> well the statement holds uh, we have a natural number n the same natural number that holds for the convergence of the original sequence such that for all k greater than n nk is greater than or equal to k and that is greater than n and by our given condition we have the difference between the kth term of the subsequence and the number it is converging to a could be made less less than epsilon so by the definition of convergence we can uh, we know that the subsequence of the original sequence also converges to the number that the original sequence converges to so this was the concept of subsequence and basically we have finished all the important properties of convergence that you need to know so now let's deal with some more examples to help you understand the concept even better so examples first what is the value that the uh, that the sequence one over n converges to two if p is a number between zero and one uh what number does its <clears throat> uh, nth power converges to? Third, if a n is defined as one negative one, one negative one, and so on, it oscillates between one and negative one. What will be the value it converges to, or? does it really converge so these are the examples we will deal with so first let's see the first example what, what would this value be um, so let's first see that by the unboundedness of natural numbers we have discussed before number epsilon uh, one over epsilon cannot be a upper bound to all natural numbers correct so what that means is that there exists a natural number large n such that it is greater than 1 over epsilon so there exists such natural number at large n so then what we have is that for all and greater than that number what we have is that the nth term of the sequence 1 over n 
and the difference of 0, which is just 1 over n, is then less, less than 1 over large n, which is from this relationship less than epsilon. And this holds for any epsilon, correct? Uh, for any epsilon, we could find in natural number large n that holds this, uh, uh, that that satisfies this inequality and for such large n we have this relationship so we can see that this sequence converges to zero so we know the answer for the first example and for the next two examples since we don't have uh, much time I'll Leave it, leave it as an uh, exercise problem for you to solve. But I'll give you some fundamental hints to approach, this, uh, approach these problems. So for this, the second example, observe that since p is a, a real number between 0 and 1, 1 over p, this number could be written as 1 plus b for some real number b. And observe that the nth power of 1 plus b is greater than or equal to 1 plus nb. Uh, this inequality is called Bernoulli's. Uh, I'm not exactly confident with the uh, spelling. Bernoulli's inequality. It's probably right. Um, this is the uh, key concept that you will use to solve this problem. The technique is really similar to what uh, we used in to solve the first first example, the the method of using the unboundedness of all natural numbers. So this this is Bernoulli's inequality, and it is quite easy if to prove if you use the uh, technique of mathematical induction. So try try it by yourself. And using these two information you'll, prob you'll probably get to an answer to this problem. And the answer is 0. And for the last example you will use the concept of subsequence, the property 6 of convergence that we have just proven. So for this sequence, observe that there are two different subsequences. Uh, the subsequence choosing all the even terms of the sequence and a subsequence choosing all of the uh, odd, uh, odd numbered terms of the sequence. And if the original sequence converges to number A, Observe that this sequence has to converge to, these two sequences also have to converge to A. And you will easily derive a contradiction. So the answer for this question is that there is no such number. This sequence does not converge to a such, uh, certain number. Now this is the end of the fourth lecture of Advanced Calculus course. In the next lecture, we'll discuss a few of the important theorems in convergence that we will use throughout the course. Thank you.